The longest serving and most senior member of the U.S. Senate, Democrat Patrick Leahy of Vermont, has served in that body through nine presidential administrations, first elected back in 1974. Take a look at his earliest days campaigning. I'm Pat Leahy. I'm running for the United good. States Senate. United States Senate. Yes, right. sir. Yeah, very good. Sure, I'd like to get the vote from, nice from both United States. Had a lot more hair back then. Now set to retire after 48 years in the Senate, Senator Leahy's new memoir, The Road Taken, chronicles his years in Washington and his home state of Vermont and how he worked with major players to help shape democracy and the Democratic Party over the decades. Senator Leahy, we thank you so much for joining us, sir. I'm delighted to be here. So let's start back in your youth. Growing up in Vermont, your family lived so close to the state capitol that it, the story goes that you rode your tricycle through the state house halls and right into the governor's office when you were just six years old. How did growing up so close to politics help ultimately inspire you to become a, a politician yourself? Well, of course, it's, it's a lot different than, I mean, you walk into the state house, there's no security back there. You could just walk around. We, we took it for granted. We kids would play there, we'd have a good time there, but then uh, you started meeting everybody and started hearing about it. My father was self-taught historian. Uh, he would talk about the history of, of the uh, State House of Congress. And you kind of grew up feeling, well, we're part of all this. And I said, that's the way I felt. And looking back at the start of your career, when you began serving in the Senate at 34, how did entering that body at such a young age shape how you approached uh, your work and, and priorities in the Senate? Well, I, I do know that uh, on my first day there, a very senior senator asked me how old I was, and I said 34. He said, you ever think you're too young to be in this place? <laughs> I said, well, that's what my opponent said, but I still got elected. Uh, I think he liked the fact that I actually stood up to him and we got along fine. But, you know, I was intrigued because when I was in law school at Georgetown, I'd, I'd walk up the hill, just watch the uh, Senate, watch the different people. And back then you had a lot of debates. You had some of the, the best minds in both the Republican and the Democratic Party. And you've worked through several significant moments in our nation's history, from post-Watergate to 9-11 and its aftermath to the pandemic. We're now, of course, in another crucial moment after the January 6th insurrection and its fallout. What concerns you most about where we are right now as a nation? When I first came to the Senate, people with their different political parties respected uh, the government, respected our laws, respected the fact that we have a constitution which puts basic uh, parameters of, of how you behave. What I worry about now is more and more people uh, could care less about that. The insurrection showed people coming in, uh, they came into the Senate chamber and demanded to know where the House members were. They didn't even know where they were, but they were uh, misstating what the Constitution said. And it's, I never thought I'd see anything. Uh, like this. Uh, I worry that we have a long way to go back to having respect for uh, both political parties, but respect for the people who are trying to run our government. And you said just a few moments ago that when you first joined, you had such a respect uh, for your fellow senators, that they were some of the, the sharpest minds, that you looked forward to the debate and the discourse that was going to take place. Do you feel that we've lost something from from that time? I do. I, I feel one of the things we've lost is that we don't actually debate things. People come in, make a statement that they're aiming, hoping it might get on the evening news. They don't stay there and they actually don't debate things. And, uh, or you got to have a, a partisan position one way or the other. Uh, that's not the way it should be. Uh, I like to see senators actually come in and debate make sure everybody's uh, voices are heard, and then vote one way or the other. 
And lastly, sir, we can't let you go without asking about one of your biggest passions, Batman. You write about how you, quote, became a voracious consumer of the Dark Knight comics. You said that you would take them home and read them under the covers, flashlight in hand, a reward for sweeping the floors of the printing shops. And you famously made cameos in five Batman films. What's drawn you so much to Batman? And, and what has it been like to be able to live out that childhood fantasy on the big screen? I never thought I would. You know, I started reading. I had my first library card when I was four years old. I loved reading Batman. I, I loved writing stories about it. And uh, every single cent I've earned from the Batman books I've written, the movies I've been in, go to the children li Children's Library in Montpelier, Vermont, where I had my first library card. At that time, it was in the basement of the adult library. Now it's a whole separate wing. Uh, and it's up for help encourage young people to read no matter what level they're in. Thank you so much, Senator Leahy. Really appreciate your time and joining us. And to our viewers, you can purchase The Road Taken, a memoir, wherever books are sold. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.